Back with you on Galazzo Match Day, and it has gone final. A nil-nil draw between Manchester City and Arsenal. It's the first time for Manchester City not scoring in a home Premier League match since October of 2021. That's 57 straight matches as Arsenal getting the nil-nil draw, still trying to get their first win on the road against Manchester City since 2015. And Wow, does that change the complexion right now of the top three in the Premier League? You've got Liverpool after their victory over Brighton. Now two points clear of Arsenal, three points clear of Manchester City. Yeah, it uh, changes things up for sure. This, If you're a Liverpool supporter, that this was the result that you were looking for, a, a draw. Uh, but I think we could safe to say that we can call this match again, between Manchester City and Arsenal anticlimactic. We expected a lot more from both of these sides at the top of the table. Instead, it was a cagey affair uh, and not a whole lot of opportunities for either of these sides. Uh, and this is how it all shakes up. Liverpool two points atop the table. Well, let's expand the conversation. Welcome in our Jeff Shreves, who joined us earlier in anticipation of this match. Jeff, my apologies as I wipe off the crust from my eyes after a two-hour nap that I saw <laughs> between these two clubs. Certainly the hype did not match up with the reality. What say you, my friend? Well, first of all, I must plead guilty to uh, misleading the jury by saying these two coaches only know how to play one way, which is to attack and go for it. Dear, oh dear. I mean, honestly, that, that was as cagey as a visit to the zoo, wasn't it? I, I think they kind of cancelled each other out in that they were so, it was so cat and mouse, but there wasn't a lot of mouse, was there? It was, well, well first and foremost, I think we saw a new Arsenal today. This was a pragmatic Arsenal. There's no question they set themselves up not to get beat today. That the way they set about the game, they slowed the game down wherever they could. They disrupted Manchester City. They took their time over every free kick. At the same time, Manchester City couldn't break them down. So you do have to give Arsenal some credit and some respect for restricting them to what they... I think, I think Manchester City only had one shot on target, which here at the Etihad, bearing in mind the record, is absolutely phenomenal. So, look... Clearly, I think it was definitely a better point for Arsenal than Manchester City. No question about that. However, whether or not the dropped points against Liverpool, only, only time will tell whether or not this was a really good point for Arsenal or not. So I think we've only seen half, if you like. We've seen another part of the story. We certainly have not seen the whole thing. Oh, you mentioned that obviously it was a, a better point for Arsenal and that they set themselves up to not get beat. But in a situation where you're facing off against your direct title rivals, Manchester City, wouldn't Arsenal supporters want to see them go for it just a bit more? Uh, we know how much struggles and how many, how many times they've struggled at the Etihad. Uh, are you, if you're an Arsenal supporter, are you happy with this result and with how they played, or would you have preferred them uh, to go out and go for it a little bit more? I think uh, most Arsenal fans will be happy with a point today because I think what they fear is had they gone for Manchester City and played an expansive game, they could have got beaten, and they could have got beaten heavily. There could have been more damage than just uh, losing all three points today. The, the damage could have been much, much greater. So I think they come out intact mentally. I think they come out intact in terms of what they can do. I mean, think about it. They've taken four points off of Manchester City this season, which they would regard as more than decent. So I, I think Arsenal fans will be quite happy with a point. But at the same, of course, they'd have loved the win. That stands to reason. But at the same time, where this point will stand them in the title race remains to be seen. Long, long ways. Honestly, I can't tell you. OK, there's nine games left. There will still be points dropped. Let's, let's cast their minds back to Liverpool today. That wasn't a straightforward, easy three points, was it? They went behind to Brighton very early on in the game. So there will be twists and turns. I think right now they'll be saying that's a very good point at the home of the champions. You take a look at what Arsenal was held to from Manchester City side. Six shots, fewest in a match this season. They were held to 28% possession. First time that they've been held to that under 40% all season long. But Manchester City was unable to capitalize with their name stars. Phil Foden was subbed out by Pep in the 61st minute. And then Erling Holland, what would you make of his no-show performance in one of the biggest matches of the season for the club? 
do you know what? Again, I think you have to give great credit to Arsenal, the way they played. I think William Saliba was named man of the match, the way they shepherded Haaland. And at times, it was almost like a training ground exercise with Manchester City camped in, not just the Arsenal half, they were virtually camped on the edge of their box. At one point, I think it was about half an hour gone, Manchester City had had 75% of possession, which is absolutely crazy numbers. But the Arsenal did a good job. They, were, they looked to try and beat them on the attack. They tried to get Manchester City on the break. They had a couple of half chances with Jesus. It didn't quite happen for them. Their final ball in the final third wasn't really good enough today from Arsenal. But the whole time, you couldn't say that Manchester City absolutely laid siege to Arsenal's goal because they too were concerned about what could happen if it was going the other way. Honestly, it was so cagey. It was so tactical wasn't easy on the eye I must admit you know for, for the purists and the neutrals it wasn't great but it was a fascinating game to watch technically so moving it forward now Liverpool sitting at the top of the table so obviously this is a result that, that, that they very much like a draw at the Etihad today where do you see this title race now shaping out obviously it's going to be kind of a race to the finish uh, but now with this result I feel like it's a little bit more wide open uh, than it had been Oh, I, I think the momentum has definitely swung today. Before today, you'd say that Manchester City are favourites. You've definitely got to say Liverpool are in the box seat right now, not just because they're at the top of the table. It's too far out to say it's in their own hands, although if you take that expression literally, it is. You know, win the remaining games, they're the champions. Simple as that. So I think today is a big shift in the title race, but I just don't feel, from what we've seen over the years, that you can start to count your chickens this early on. There's a, there's a huge amount of game. Liverpool have got to go to Aston Villa. I mean, Villa, we don't quite know what we're going to get from that at the moment. You know, that they can be patchy, but they've also they've beaten some good sides. They beat Manchester City at Villa Park as well. That won't be easy. Arsenal have got to go to Manchester United. They've got to go to Tottenham as well. So there are some tricky fixtures for all three of them. But today could have been a significant move. Now. If that significant move is Liverpool's lead in the title or Arsenal's pragmatic point, I don't know. But if you said to me in terms of one, two, three, best day for Liverpool, not a bad day for Arsenal, I think City would have hoped for more than that today. I was going to say, I, I believe a lot of Manchester City fans, their optimism level dropped a notch from the beginning of the match to now the end result of the match. And is it a fair argument to say that with the handful of matches that we still have left in the season, that the possibility of Manchester City doing the unthinkable and winning four straight Premier League titles, not to say it's extinct, but it's more than likely not going to happen. No, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's more than likely not to happen. I'd say it's taken a dent, their ambition, for a fourth straight title. You know, there's a reason why it's then been done, because it is so, so difficult. But don't forget, this is Manchester City we're talking about. We've been here so many times. When you write them off, and when they're not leading from the front, they reel in, they reel them in, whoever's in front of them, and they finish up as champions. They've got extraordinary ability to do that. The other thing about them today as well, just look at the quality they had to bring off the bench. Now, unfortunately, it didn't quite work for them, but they've got so much talent in depth. So they can cope with all of the competitions they're in and bring in top, top players as well. So, I mean, you would be foolish to write them off completely. Yeah, I, uh, I think that uh, you can never count out Manchester City. We've seen this movie before and they eventually go on a run and start not dropping any points. And if any team makes any mistake, there is Manchester City to come in and win another title. So, yeah, you definitely can't count them out just yet. I won't do it, definitely. All right, Jeff Shreves with the very latest following a nil-nil draw between Manchester City and Arsenal where we found ourselves with much more questions than we do answers after today's performance. Jeff, thank you so much. Pleasure, guys.